it'll be criminal of us to overlook Adele Tarrapt in this just because of how good that season was. Yeah, I mean, it's not worth the hassle not putting him in from QPR fans, to be honest with you. So by default, he's got to be in there. Peter Whittingham, for me, is the championship go. Free kicks, crossing the ball. Wonderful left foot does not do that man justice. 85 goals in 126 games at championship level. <laughs> he had a goal, he scored a goal every 117 minutes and obviously got 43 last season. Yeah, I'm also glad he's in the Premier League because it's just not fair for other clubs. Can you imagine how many goals he would have scored if he could get out of his garden? <laughs> but, you know. And finally, we need to pick a manager for this team, Justin. I wonder who the manager's going to be. A championship legend in anybody's eyes and just an all-round top bloke. And he's one you love to hate, but I, I just can't see why he, anyone would dislike him. Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Stopwatch. It's the topical championship show with a little twist. It's usually five topics, a two-minute timer and two hosts. We're running just from the Second Tier podcast, but we're doing things a little bit differently this week. Of course, it's the international break, so we haven't got as much championship football for us to talk about. So what me and Justin are going to do is the ultimate Second Tier retro. We've been asked to make our all-time championship 11. I'm bloody excited to do this, Justin, because everyone will have their own opinions on who the best championship player is in each position. But who else, who better, Justin, than us to tell (laughs) everyone who the actual goats are in the championship? So we start with the goalkeeper position, shall we, Justin? In goal, we've gone for Paddy Kenny, ex-Sheffield United, Leeds, QPR, many clubs, in fact, in the championship. And he comes up quite a lot in the stopwatch, don't he? But there's a reason for that, because he was a bloody good goalkeeper. Yeah, he's uh, an outstanding character as well. And uh, a Neil Warnock uh, favourite and disciple. And I think that goes that actually goes a long way. Um, uh, yeah, Neil Warnock's managed a lot of good teams. And for him to take Paddy Kenny with, with him everywhere, almost, pretty much, I think says a lot about Paddy Kenny. Very reliable performer. Very good goalkeeper and perhaps one of those that are massively underrated. I think just the amount of clean sheets he's kept at his teams um, does justify it. He's got 118 his entire career. He kept 110 at Sheffield United. Mm. Just staggering. Just absolutely staggering. And um, yeah, there's not much else we can really say about Paddy Kenny that we haven't said before. Great, great character. Great goalkeeper. And uh, yeah, a Neil Warnock, um, a Neil Warnock legend. One of those. Yeah. And those clean sheets figures are pretty phenomenal. Aren't they? But yeah, he's, I, I do agree with you. I think he is quite an underrated keeper because when you think of Paddy Kenny, you think of the numerous jibes he's had about mm. his size and off the pitch issues. But in terms of actual goalkeeping, he was very reliable. Once I can't remember too many times he made mistakes and he's got multiple promotions to his name as well. So without a doubt, Paddy Kenny is worthy of the number one spot in our team all-time team of championship <laughs> history. Uh, Justin, who we got right back? We've got Kieran Trippier. Now, this one was a bit a bit of a, a debate between us. I wanted Graham Alexander, but I happily concede to Kieran Trippier on this occasion. Because... I will say, Justin, I think right back's got quite a few contenders. You've got yeah, Alexander, yeah. Angle, Rangel, um, Bruno from yeah. Brighton. There were quite a few. But for me, I, I'll tell you why I was so hot on Trippier. I think it's because... When you talk about players who cut their teeth at football league level and then went on to become elite players, Mm. Trippier is a prime example of that because he spent multiple seasons in the championship. Not like Harry Kane's, for example, who had, I think, one or two seasons on Mm. loan and didn't really play regularly for those clubs. Kieran Trippier was playing week in, week out. He got... Um, player of the season for Burnley in his first season there and then in the following two seasons he was named in the championship or PFA team of the seasons I can't remember yeah. which one it was so for that I think you've got to take your hat off to Kieran Trippier for taking the step down to the championship and making a bloody good career out of uh, what lessons he learned from his time in the second tier Without a shadow of a doubt I, I know I, I wanted Graham Alexander in. I love Graham Alexander but Kieran Trippier was was an outstanding player at this level and a really key component to that Sean Dyche side, big four four, you know, four four two formation under Dyche in that Burnley side. His delivery was ridiculous. The amount of assists he got for a fullback in a team that was 
not known for its attacking wing back, shall we say, is is, is actually quite um quite a quite a mean feat. And interestingly enough, he's actually played more games at Championship level than he has in the Premier League, which goes to show that he's gone to become an elite player, as you say, while cutting his teeth in the Championship. That is a fantastic stat, Justin. That's actually surprised <laughs> me quite a lot. I did not expect that at all. Um, who have we got at centre back, Justin? It's your boy, isn't it? Yeah, first one is Curtis Davis. Couldn't have a team of the team of the year, the ultimate team. Couldn't have a championship ultimate team without Curtis Davis in there. Um, now, I know people will say I'm a Derby fan. I'm bound to have him in. But actually, his best football came before Derby. Um, his spell at West Brom, probably less known for that, but he was a, an incredible player at West Brom. Um, and then moving on to Birmingham for two seasons uh, later on uh, in the early 2010s. Again, really, really consistent. And then his spell at Hull, that partnership with Michael Dawson, had no right being in the championship. Two experienced players, two two players who knew what they were doing. He's been a captain at every uh, every club he's had. Over three hundred appearances in the championship. Two pay, two PFA Team of the Year entries. Just ticking boxes here as to re, as to why he should be in this team. I mean, it's hard to disagree with you, Justin. <laughs> you talk about the number of clubs he's been at, and I think if you asked every single fan of his past clubs, every single person would vouch for him being an absolute top player, top class bloke. And um, in in many cases, a bit of a cult icon really, wasn't he? Yeah. Because he is a massive leader on the pitch. As you say, he was captain at numerous different clubs. He's won promotion from numerous different clubs as well. Just a fantastic priority. And it's a pleasure to see him on our TV screens very often now <laughs> as a pundit because um, he's just a, a top bloke. He knows the game like the back of his hand, doesn't he? Our other centre-half is Wes Morgan. Now, the reason is because Wes Morgan was kind of similar to Kieran Trippier, actually. He spent most of his career cutting his teeth in the Championship, didn't he? And you thought he might get a chance at Premier League level one day, but then when he actually did, he obviously took it with both hands, didn't he? And we all know what he went on to do. Won the Premier League as captain of Leicester City. And... Keep in mind that, as I say, he was mainly a championship player up until those first two seasons with Leicester in the Premier League. But he was phenomenal for a number of years, for not just Leicester, but also for Nottingham Forest, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And I think everybody immediately associates Wes Morgan with his Leicester City spell, when actually he was part of that Nottingham Forest team under Billy Davis that was ridiculously good uh, and arguably should have won promotion um, if it wasn't for some poor form towards the end of the season. Uh, a very accomplished ball-playing defender as well, very comfortable in the championship with the ball at his feet. Surprisingly quick for his size as well. I think that would have surprised quite a lot of people. Um, and again, a captain at Nottingham Forest and at Leicester, it just goes to show what a leader he was. Uh, and for me, got to be the best centre-half in the in the championship in my time anyway he's, he's just an absolutely incredible incredible player and what he managed to achieve at the top level that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for his spell in the championship easy as that yeah completely agree who have we got left back Justin we've got George Friend and I don't think you could get a more consistent left back in championship history than George Friend now we say that right backs were you know very you know, quite an easy quite an easy um, group to pick from left backs not so much um, and I think that's probably part and parcel down to George Friend's longevity in the championship and consistency okay not not a goal scorer doesn't create didn't create too much at Middlesbrough from left back but a solid pro solid defender back to back PFA team of the years as well um, yeah a really really good player at this level and I think also probably the biggest bargain any club yeah. has ever picked up at championship level because when he moved from Doncaster to Middlesbrough, how much was it? I think I, I, for some reason, 150 grand is yeah. standing out for me, but it was whatever it was, it was for virtually pennies in today's money. But he went on to be, I think, the captain at Middlesbrough, but just a long standing servant for them and is still very fondly remembered for his time there to this day because, as you say, as far as consistent left-backs go. He was right up there for many, many years. He was the best left-back in the division mm -hmm. by quite a, quite a fair yeah. distance for many seasons and was the key reason why Middlesbrough got promoted. Um, who have we got in midfield, Justin? This will probably be not much of a surprise to many people watching this. Well, I mean, I'll go with the, the less obvious one, probably Ollie Nord. Okay. 
I'll go with Ollie Norwood first. We'll, we'll move on to him first. Championship goat um, in, in, uh, from a midfielder's perspective. And again, one of those players that has been criminally underrated over the years. Um, three successive promotions with Brighton, Fulham and Sheffield United. And what we're seeing now this season from Ollie Norwood is just a, a ridiculously um, high level of performance from him. He's dominating midfield. He's, he's got everything in his locker. And not only that, he's probably one of the best passers in the league currently, perhaps one of the best passers in, you know, ever in the championship, actually. Just a, an outstanding player and, and one that I think has been criminally undervalued by supporters and his managers. Yeah, completely agree. I think he's quite criminally underrated by many Sheffield United fans <laughs> right now. Um, but he has been showing his true best form this season and it has really made you appreciate how good a player he actually is. In terms of technical ability, I think he's been one of the most technically gifted players the Championship has had to offer for a n- number of years. And it's quite ridiculous, really, that he hasn't been able to play for a sustained period in the Premier League because he is just a top, top player. As you say, spraying the ball about, dictating games, wonderful player. Defensively, he offers quite a lot, which you wouldn't mm-hmm. usually associate with him. But I mean, we've seen that this season as well. You only have to look at his defensive figures. He's a phenomenal player. And uh, as you say, he's won promotion new, new, numerous times and really should have had more of a crack at the Premier League. But that's just how things go sometimes, isn't it? Um, our next centre midfielder, we've got three, by the way. Our next centre midfielder is one that I think many people are expecting to see in this team. It's a Delta Rout. Now, people may say one season wonder, one season wonder, but it'll be criminal of us to overlook a Delta Rout in this just because of how good that season was. That 2010 2011 season is probably, Alexander Mitrovic may have an argument with it, but in terms of influencing the whole team and just getting them on the front foot every time he was on the ball. I don't think we'll ever see anything like we saw with Adele Trout. And he did it with such style as well, whether it was nutmegging two players in a row and then bending it into the top corner or throwing a hissy fit, whatever the case, it was all great entertainment whenever whenever Adele Trout was on the pitch in that season. And QPR fans, he is the cult hero at QPR, isn't he? for that season. He's actually a bit of a cult hero for not just QPR fans, football fans in general, because of how he played the game and the actual figures that he produced that season. He produced double figures for goals mm-hmm. and assists. In fact, I think he's got the most goals and assists in a single season, apart from Mitrovic, who's obviously ruined that stat now. Um, but until then, from midfield, Tarat was the championship goat for that one season. Yeah, I mean, it's not worth the hassle not putting him in from QPR fans, to be honest with you. So by default, he's got to be in there. Um, and yeah, it, I mean, every single clip I, I I see him far too often on my Twitter timeline of clips him uh, of him doing Adel trap things. It's it's quite quite staggering, staggering really. And I think yeah, it, it's it's a bygone era now that we don't get players like that often in the championship. So when they are, you've got to really savor them, which is why. Which is why we try to do it as much as possible on this podcast. We you know, we try to shine a light on them as much as possible um, because they deserve it. And Tarapt certainly falls in that category. You know, just a shame we weren't old enough to be doing a podcast back then. That would have been that would have been a good time. That would have been a good time, wouldn't it? Now, if you're talking about the Championship goat, Mitrovic, as I say, may have a bit of a say in that now. But previously, the argument was straight up between Tarapt and this man, Peter Whittingham. And that was because many people would say, well, Whittingham had more seasons in the championship and Terrapt had the one. Whatever the case, Peter Whittingham, for me, is the championship GOAT. Just because season after season, he put in unbelievable performances on a regular basis. The number of goals he scored from outside the box was phenomenal. But free kicks, crossing the ball, wonderful left foot does not do that man justice. It was amazing seeing this guy and he will he's a Cardiff City legend for a player to be a legend of a big football club like Cardiff based purely on your performances in the championship is pretty incredible isn't it but yeah for me he was just a marvellous marvellous player and I just love watching compilations of him doing his thing 
Yeah, and I think one thing that we don't talk about enough with Peter Whittigan was his commitment to Cardiff. Um, you know, if you've got a player who's scoring as regularly and creating as regularly as he does, and he's got the technical ability that Peter Whittigan that, that he had, him staying at Cardiff for as long as he did, I think is absolutely a massive plus to him. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic uh, achievement, and I'm sure there would have been clubs asking about him when he was in his peak, uh, when he when he was in his peak years, whilst. Whilst Cardiff were lower mid-table dwellers under the likes of Paul Trollope and Russell Slade, we stayed at Cardiff during that really dull time in their period um, when he could have easily probably moved elsewhere. And I think that's a credit to him. Um, I can't really talk about his quality enough, but yeah, his commitment to Cardiff is something that you know doesn't get doesn't get to yeah chatted about. Yeah, people will say if he was so good, why did he play in the Championship for so long? Why did he have to move to the Premier League if he's fairly happy? playing at Cardiff and destroying things there, then fair play to him. He's just loving life there, wants he? Um, let's go to our front line then, Justin. We've gone for three strikers because it felt a bit rude <laughs> leaving any of these guys out, really, didn't it? Um, we'll go for the obvious one, first of all, which is Alexander Mitrovic. And I think he pretty much nailed his status as a true championship great with that season, last season, where he scored the 42 goals. I mean, we'll never see a season like that again, will we? But even before that, his goal-scoring record in the Championship was pretty amazing, wasn't mm -hmm. it? And he's just a goal machine at second-tier level. And I'm glad that this season he's finally putting to bed the old myth that he can't do it in the Premier League because he's just a player who's been too good for the Championship for so long and really should be playing in the Premier League. Anyone who can score twenty plus goals in a Scott Parker team deserves an accolade of of this sort of uh, of this sort of a, yeah uh, attention. I mean, Dominic Slanky, you've missed out there, son, because you you did it last season for Bournemouth. But yeah, Mitrovic, an animal, eighty five goals in one hundred twenty six games at Championship level. He had a goal. He scored a goal every one hundred seventeen minutes, and obviously got forty three last season. His goals per minute record at Championship level um, for the amount of games he has played. Is um, is absolutely ludicrous. It is. It's it's, it's bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers. It's it's football manager stuff. It, it, it really is. And um, fair play to Slavisi Jakandovic for bringing him on uh, in on loan a couple of seasons ago, a few seasons ago from Newcastle because it turned out to be um, an incredible move. And he's he's quite arguably a Fulham legend. And yeah, as you say, I'm glad he's doing it at Premier League level because he's justifying. Um, Every every bit of praise he had last season, and he's yeah he's replicating that now in the in the top division. Yeah, I'm also glad he's in the Premier League because it's just not fair for other clubs with him <laughs> playing in the second tier, is it? Because he is just a goal monster. Um, next up in the front line, we've gone for Billy Sharp, which is another pretty obvious one, really, isn't it? And that's just because in terms of pure longevity, Billy Sharp can't be topped, can he, Justin? No, like wine and cheese as well. Just just got better with age. A lot, the older it got, got better. It's um, absolutely crazy how you know he hit his sort of early thirties and he stepped it up another level for Sheffield United. It's um, it's absolutely incredible. And his his goal record at the clubs that he's been at, he's had quite a few clubs. He scored a lot of goals at Doncaster when Doncaster weren't necessarily a a team who were you know chasing for promotion. For example, um, it was at Southampton and helped get them over the line. Obviously went to Leeds as well and still scored goals there. And not even Forest. There's just a big long list of clubs that he's been at that he scored goals for. And I don't think you get players like that very often. You know, you see Kevin Phillips types, and obviously he's unfortunate to miss out. But Billy Sharp being the top goal scorer in modern championship history, um, I think you've got to put him in. He's a again another another goat level player. Yeah, just not much else we can say about Billy Sharp that we haven't already. Exactly. And he's just impossible to leave out, isn't he, quite frankly? Uh, the final striker position. Now, there were plenty of strikers, you could argue, here. I mean, Timu Puki will feel quite um, annoyed about missing out, I imagine. Um, Ivan Tony is one who I made a good argument for. Um, Jordan Rhodes is another one who scored a lot of goals in his time in championship level. But we've gone for Ross McCormack, who, despite never winning promotion form from the championship um in a team that he's playing regularly in anyway um his goal record is just absolutely ridiculous isn't it and considering he did it at multiple clubs as well i think i'm right in saying he's the only championship player ever 
to score 20 plus goals for mm -hmm. three different clubs. I mean, it just goes to show that class is permanent with this guy, isn't it? And he had a lot of class. And if it wasn't for, you know, off the pitch issues, that kind of thing, then he's another one who probably should have been playing more at Premier League level. But what a player he was. Also playing in some sides that weren't very good on mm -hmm. many occasions, wasn't he? Yeah, I was happy to leave him out until I looked at his goal record. 120 goals in 333 games. It's a better goals per game record than Billy Sharp. Um, now, when you consider that Ross McCormack's career practically finished when he went to Aston Villa, when he was age 30, can you imagine how many goals he would have scored if he could get out of his garden? <laughs> but, you know, if he could just get out of his garden and be in Steve Bruce's good books, he would he would be miles ahead of Billy Sharp in terms of the amount of goals scored in, in Championship history. Um, he's only eight behind him now. And as I say, his career practically finished when he hit 30. It's it's a, it's a case of what could have been, but you've got to recognise the class and the, the the skill that Ross McCormack had and the, the consistency to do it at different clubs, as you say, weren't that great either. They weren't promotion chasing teams. Yeah, exactly. And also, he wasn't just a goal scorer, was he? His passing ability was hmm. phenomenal. His dribbling, amazing. First touch, great. Yeah, he... He's just a he was a wonderful player to watch and also produce the goods as well. And finally, we need to pick a manager for this team, Justin. I wonder who the manager's Come gonna on. be. It's of course big Neil Warnock. Um promotions record holder for the number of promotions from the championship. It was a fairly straightforward decision, this, wasn't it? Yeah, it's okay. his, his record speaks for itself. Sheffield United, QPR, keep keeping Rotherham up a couple of years, well, quite a few years ago now. Going up with Cardiff when they weren't when they, when they weren't fancied. Yeah, keeping Crystal Palace up, the only manager to do that while a team's been in in administration to keep them up. It, yeah, just so many individual records as a manager, um, and I think it's it's quite incredible for him to have been able to do it. You can only argue that he's only had ever have had really one bad spell, and that was at, at Leeds. You can argue his Borough spell was a success because he kept them in the Championship, and he steered them on to steadier, steadier waters, um, albeit a little bit of inconsistency last season. But yeah, he's, he's a, a Championship legend in anybody's eyes, and just an all-round top bloke. And he's one you love to hate, but I, I just can't see why he, anyone would dislike him. Yeah, I, it's a mystery to me why anyone would dislike him. Um, and it would also be absolutely top-class entertainment to see him trying to control a dressing room that has the likes of Adele Tarrant, Alexander Mitrovic and Ross McCormack <laughs> in it. That would be top-quality TV. Um, but there we go, ladies and gentlemen. This has been our all-time Championship eleven. Who would you include? This is someone who we have been unjust to anyone who you think we have sorely missed out please let us know in the comments section below. please subscribe for more content like this and we'll be back again very soon this has been the second tier podcast you can follow us at second tier pod i'm ryan dilks one that's just in peach 27 and we'll be back again very soon 